everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I want to share some author confessions with you. Some of these are honestly perfectly normal things I do that I share with you so that you feel better about something that maybe you do as a writer as well, and others are legitimately some low-key author publishing kind of secrets, though obviously if I'm sharing them with you, I'm okay sharing them with you, but they're definitely lesser talked about things, things that I mostly haven't covered on this channel. And certainly if you're newer to the channel, some of these will surprise you, though longtime viewers might know a few of them. And indeed, the first one won't be a shock to longtime viewers, but I love to repeat this as often as possible, and that is the confession that I do not write every day. I am a professional writer. I am published. I have two books out and a third coming next year, and I definitely don't write every day. Indeed, I will go incredibly long stretches without writing at all. This is because I am a mono project kind of author, and I tend to hyper focus on one thing at a time for long stretches of time, and then I totally detox from it once I am done, and I take long periods of essentially creative recovery. So what this means is when I'm actively drafting a project, indeed, I do write every day. I try really, really hard to write every day because getting into that writing habit is an essential part of drafting for me. But once I transition into the editing phase, it's a very different part of my brain from writing, and I can't draft something new while I am editing. And once I'm done editing a project, I'll often take six to eight to even 12 weeks off from writing. So what this will amount to is that in a given year, I might only spend three to four months of a given year actually writing. Now, of course, this is probably why I'm not going to win the volume game when it comes to writing and publishing, a longer term goal of mine, because I am interested in aspects of self-publishing. But you can definitely be a functioning author, a writer with a career, and not write every single day. And you are no less of a passionate creative soul because you don't bleed onto the page every single day. Now, of course, I'm doing other forms of writing every day. Social media is an amazing thing. It's actually good because it's still kind of exercising those writing muscles. And I'm doing aspects of creativity really every day of the year, from brainstorming, refilling the well, editing, and or drafting. But this is me on my soapbox telling you not to freak out if you too cannot write every single day. You're good. My second author confession actually came up in an editing video and I got a few people a little bit shocked, but I'm here to confess. I don't particularly enjoy reading my own books more than maybe once or twice. This means I do not read my book every single time I edit it and people are like, what? I very rarely read my book from start to finish and I mean read it like a reader, put it on my Kindle and read it essentially for pleasure. Read it as a reader would read it so I can spot bigger picture issues with pacing, characterization, etc. Honestly, if I did that every single time I went in to edit my book, I would hate my book far more than is productive for actually working on my book. I have a video on the love-hate cycle, and basically I don't want to be in a hate cycle all of the time, so I save up my energies. Now, I am an efficient editor in the sense that I, of course, go into sections of my book as I'm editing it. I read them as I work, but it's a different part of my brain when I'm editing, and going through it piecemeal isn't quite the same as reading the whole thing start to finish, which I save for right after I have drafted a book, and much, much, much later in the editing process, usually so close to the end of the publishing process, closer to past pages, honestly, that I can essentially read my own work fresh. And after that, I'm never going to read my book again. <laughs> Once it's published, I don't read my work. I'm basically over it, and it's I'm far too likely to get embarrassed by things I can no longer control because it's done, it's published. <laughs> But yeah, I realize some authors read their books over and over and over again, and I'm just not one of those people. What this basically means is my agent and my editor have read my books more than I have. And I guess this shocks some people. Yeah. Okay, my third confession is kind of juicy. <laughs> I have a nemesis or two. Funny story about this one. Years and years and years ago, before I had my publishing deal, I went to a panel at Yale West. 
And Soman Chanami said something that at the time I was tickled and delighted by, low-key shocked and skeptical of, which was, every author has a nemesis. And he told this really funny story about it, about a nemesis of his. And I was in the back and I was like, haha, that's so funny, I'll never have a nemesis, how silly. And it's weird, but it actually becomes true. And it's not about being like a horrific Slytherin human being, because a ton of authors aren't Slytherins, I am a Ravenclaw, you know, basically cutthroatedly being like, my nemesis, I will take you down. It's really not like that. It's just so strange when you get into publishing, the deeper you get, there are just people who are going to rub you the wrong way, or you're going to rub them the wrong way. Sometimes you end up with a nemesis because inexplicably, they really, really seem to hate you, and you're not sure why, and you have awkward or bad interactions. I have had this happen. But also just sometimes there's an author and you see them and they just get under your skin. And so you put them on your nemesis list and you just watch them from afar. You never actually do anything. The authors who do cutthroatedly go after other people, that's a whole area I'm not going to go into because that is not how I roll. But like amusingly, I am telling you, I definitely have a list with a capital L of some authors where it's kind of like a combination of I'm pretty sure they don't like me and maybe we're competing with each other, but also people who aren't even in my same genre space. Like, we literally don't compete with each other, but there's just something about them, and I just watch from afar. So yeah, I have a couple of nemeses, and it's pretty normal to have them, so it's funny. I laughed at someone saying this, and then it became true, and almost every author friend I have, like, we're in the trenches, we're being published, we are published, it just happens to everyone. You end up with one nemesis, like the person from afar who has wronged you and they don't even know it. And it's actually kind of funny. Okay, so my fourth author confession is actually pretty common, but we don't talk about it that much. And honestly, I really, really don't enjoy self-promotion. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm like, yeah, no, this is why I almost never plug my own books in my videos. I don't really like it. I find it awkward. I hate self-promotion on Twitter, especially. I will go out of my way not to do it. Or actually, I don't tweet enough. And so I tend to only tweet when I have self-promotion, when I'm like super busy with editing or drafting, so that's fun, where your feed is just like, hey, this thing's on sale. But I find it very awkward. I prefer to just, just be myself on social media and kind of be like, hey, I do publish books. So that's why, you know, always put your book info in your bio and make sure your website has the stuff. And I always have things down below in the link descriptions, but I find self-promotion really super awkward, which is probably another reason why traditional publishing has been the right path for me. Though, I mean, there's something to be said for, there's obviously marketing where you're in a way promoting yourself. You're just not hard selling. I actually think that's the way to put it. I really don't like hard sell self promotion. I'm really uncomfortable with it. And it's not that uncommon to be comfortable with it. So this confession is mostly about letting you know it's totally okay to not be okay with it. It's also totally okay to self promote. It's actually, it's a necessary evil. And if you get anyone giving you attitude because you're promoting your links or your sales or your titles or your debut or whatever, like, they can shut up. At a certain point, you just have to promote yourself. The key is to just do it when you need to. But also look for balance in your social media and self-promotion. Like, find a happy medium, but you never have to really enjoy doing it. I certainly do not. Okay, so my fifth author confession is a little bit juicy as well. This is, this is when people ask authors about this all the time. Do you base characters in your books off of real people? And I'm here to confess that I have not as a matter of course. I tend not to routinely base characters on real people. Admittedly, for my two first published books, they're retelling, so I'm basing them off of existing characters, not real people. But I have mind inspiration in some of my characters, particularly my antagonists from real people in real life. Maybe some of those nipsies. <laughs> Not really, but I have put little details. There's some of this in the Ivies in particular of real people, stories I've heard of real people. I am careful not to make it people I have had specific personal interactions with, but I might slip a thing or two into a character because the truth is stranger than fiction and very often those kind of real person, real world details are what makes something really pop out. The important thing is to not make a character so obviously one person that you can get sued. It's mining little details from different people and putting them in to one place. But yes, uh, specifically in the Ivies, there's definitely some characters who have things that are based on some real people that I know.
My sixth author confession, again, will not be a surprise to longtime watchers of the channel, but I haven't brought it up in a while, and that is, I actually do read my reviews with an asterisk. I'm not afraid of reviews. I'm not afraid of negative criticism. I honestly, every book, have this thirst of knowledge. I need to know. I need to take the temperature of what people are saying about the book, both good and bad. So what I do on every release so far, I've got two under my belt, and I imagine I'm going to repeat this with the Ivies. I will read most of my reviews right up until the week of release and or two to three weeks after. At that point, I tend to honestly hit an emotional boiling point. The thing is, I want to know, but I'm not going to lie and say that reviews don't hurt me. Negative reviews. Yes, they do hurt me. They don't hurt me on the level that they hurt some other authors. I know authors, like personal friends of mine, who get so wounded by even the most tepid of criticism. I'm talking people who can't handle a four-star review. I am not that kind of author. <laughs> Where, like, they, they, like, they self-destruct. I'm not that bad. But I do kind of reach an emotional boiling point where you read the same criticism over and over again and it kind of sinks in and you're like, oh god, maybe I'm garbage. And that's the point where like I can't really look at Goodreads anymore. So if you give me like a negative review later on in the process, I'm probably never gonna see it. But I do read my reviews up until a few weeks after release because uh, I just want to know <laughs> what people are saying. I haven't read a Brightly Burning review in almost two years since mid-June 2018 because it was best for my mental health so that I could move on and write another book. And The Stars We Steal I stopped reading about a week and a half after release, uh, but I do still like look at my Goodreads rating. It's not healthy, but I'm here to confess to you that I do it. But I at least only see the rating on my home screen. I don't actually click in and read. But yeah, that that's my confession. I definitely read my trade reviews and then I, I do read my kind of like general market Goodreads or Amazon reviews up to a point. You can't be too afraid of kind of the consensus of negative criticism. You just kind of have to, I personally have to know what it is and then just let it wash over me and process and go, okay. And actually my seventh author confession, <laughs> it kind of rolls into this. So like, I'll be honest, I know that my books are pretty good. I mean, they're good enough to be published. I'm proud of them. I think that's the important thing to say. I know that the prose is fine. It's, it's serviceable. I tell decent stories and I know that there are people who really, really like them. But I honestly don't think I am shockingly incredibly amazing. I don't have that kind of ego. It's it's partly a dose of healthy imposter syndrome, but also I've made videos about being realistic about your writing because genuinely I think this is something that helps me with my sense of perspective, with anxiety, to process criticism and rejection. I think I'm good, but I don't think I'm incredible amazing. I don't expect to win awards. You know, I don't expect to be a massive bestseller. I just hope, of course, that people enjoy the books. And I also do think I'm getting better. I think I'm getting better with everything every book I write. I'm proud of the Ivies on a whole new level. But like, I like, I think I have a pretty realistic sense of kind of where I fall. Uh, and that's just my little confession. Like, I think there's this common notion that every published author must have a massive ego and think they're the most amazing writer in the world. And like, of course, you do encounter authors who seem to think that. But I, I think I have pretty middle of the road realistic ideas about my writing. And so like, I think I'm fine. I don't think I'm reinventing the wheel, but I enjoy writing my books and I'm very happy to have them go out and be published and have people enjoy them. And that said, I do think the Ivies is a very fun thriller romp and I hope people buy it. But you know, yeah. Which brings me to author confession number eight. The other thing that I see that people tend to make assumptions on, and this assumption has been made to my face, that because I'm someone who talks very realistically about my writing, about the industry, who gives people advice about things like the genre in which I publish, why sci-fi or have published, etc., and so on and so forth, that I must have like not good book sales. I must be really disappointed in my debut because I talk about not breaking out. And that's just transparency because I don't see the point in lying and sitting here and pretending I'm the greatest author in the world. I'm so wonderful when realistically, I mean, I'm not a bestseller. There's a ton of people who have never even heard of me, including on booktube. Like I, I'm not the biggest, buzziest YA writer. I mean, that's just a reality. But honestly, I'm really happy with my sales and I'm not blowing smoke up your butt by saying that. I'm telling you genuinely. I really think about the industry and numbers and I think strategically. I like having lots of information. And my agent and I have looked at YA sci-fi sales 
and I'm in a really good, strong position. I made a whole video about why sci-fi, where I talked about it, because it's true. Sci-fi is never going to do big blockbuster numbers, but it's a small, dedicated and passionate readership. And so the sense of satisfaction comes from, well, how many of that dedicated readership did you reach? Are they actually reading your book? I have a pretty decent ratio of like people actually reading and reviewing on Goodreads, though I don't read those reviews anymore as I've already covered. And some people really like it and some people really don't. But like my sales between my hardcover sales and my ebook sales are pretty good, to be honest, and I'm really happy. I'm happy with the sales on Brightly Burning. I mean, COVID has kind of like hit us in the face. I mean, we'll see what kind of happens in the long term on my second book, The Stars We Steal, but I'm not going to be the only author, you know, out there with kind of a decline in the hardcover sales because of the whole global situation. But certainly before it happened, I was happy with those sales too. And really, it's considered kind of uncouth to talk about sales at all. But and I'm not going to tell you my numbers, but I'm here to tell you, I'm genuinely happy and satisfied with them. You know, I'm not someone who regrets. I'm not someone who looks back and likes to what if I never really have been. And so I am not going to do that about my debut. I still feel so grateful and lucky to have gotten a great agent to have sold the book, you know, submission wasn't easy. I've made videos about it. To have sold the book to an editor who really loved it and a team who worked really, really hard on it. They did so much for my first book and I've had so many good experiences with it. Have there been disappointments? Of course. I've got some more confessions that are actually going to cover those, but I just think that's kind of reality and rolling with the punches. I don't see the point in either being rosy and ignoring all senses of reality and like lying to people, but nor do I see the point of particularly whining or complaining. I'm honestly really happy. And the ninth confession that I've been honest with people about, and maybe this is where they draw conclusions, I'm never going to earn out. And I don't have a problem with that. I got a pretty decent advance for my books, but the sales of those books, it's just probably never going to happen based on the royalty statements that I've seen and my realistic sense of how books work in the industry. But I honestly don't mind. The thing is, and maybe I should make an entire video about this, it's not incredibly common knowledge that people are getting better at talking about it more recently. And when I realized this, it was a light bulb moment. And that is, my publisher started making money off of me long time ago, like almost immediately. I might never earn out, but that's because of the percentages and the deals. It's this whole thing. But my publisher has been making a profit off of me for a while and will continue to make a profit off of me. And ultimately, in terms of career success and so on and so forth, that's really all that matters. Is your publisher going to make a profit off of your book with sales relative to your advance? Not whether you are going to earn out that advance. Is it nice to earn out an advance? Yes. And if I do, I will shout it from the rooftops and I will tell you all about it. But I'm pretty aware that on my first two books that it's highly unlikely that I'm going to earn out those advances and that's totally okay. All right, my 10th author confession, I threw this in here in case you missed my entire video about this, but it's a good author confession to put in a list like this and that is, I don't want to quit my job. I don't have any immediate or really long term intention of becoming a full time writer. It's not something that I think is suited to my personality, my life situation at this time. I will link down below to that video. I go in depth <laughs> into the reasoning behind this. But honestly, one of the saving graces of the last couple years of pursuing this career has been that I mean, I like my day job, it pays me decently well, and it has provided me with the stability, generally, but also emotionally, to give me all of the bandwidth and things I need to pursue my writing career career so that I'm not nickel diming my advances or worrying about earning out. Honestly, the money I have gotten from publishing has been wonderful gravy money. I've been able to buy myself nice things. I have robust savings. I might be able to buy a house at some point, something I never thought was possible. And all of this comes from the peace of mind of having a full time job that is not writing novels. And I'm honestly really, really happy. And it's totally okay, no matter what you want to do. This is my positioning currently. And then there are authors where no, it's the dream of writing full time. And that's the only thing that's going to make them happy and fulfilled slash they're in a situation where it's possible. But yeah, my author confession personally is I at this time, always open to changing one's mind, but I have no interest in it. And I'm really happy uh, where I am.
So my 11th author confession addresses a thing that people ask about all the time. They, they, they're worried about author control over the book and editors making you change something. And my author confession said as vaguely as possible because I do not tell tales out of school. Uh, I have definitely disagreed with my editor before editorially on the direction of my book. It's actually happened more than once because it's more common than you think, but not in an awful conflict kind of way. And that's really why I'm confessing this. It's perfectly normal to get a note from your editor where they see a problem and they suggest a way that you should change it. And you just really hate their suggestion. And honestly, it's as simple as just pushing back gently. I do advise pushing back gently with a solution. I think it's always more productive to be like, first of all, acknowledge, uh, I see the problem that you're addressing instead of this thing that they want that you think is stupid, but don't tell them that you think it's stupid. How about this? You turn it into a proactive conversation and also always involve your agent in this because they're there to go to bat for you should your editor try to push for what they want over what you want. Honestly though, you also can just do it the way you want, fix it the way that speaks to you because ultimately you are the author and then turn it in and see if they say anything. I won't lie. I haven't even had the conversation once or twice because I was just like, I'm just gonna do it my way. I know I can handle this. But the important thing is to take on board the note, the problem that they're pointing out. But yes, I have definitely disagreed with my editor before editors. I've had three editors at two publishers. So, and I have gone to bat for what I felt very, very strongly about on my books because ultimately it is my name on the cover of the book. It is me who gets all the flack for whatever people don't like about the book. Whether they like the thing I fought for or didn't like the thing I fought for, it was still mine. So yeah, it's not that bad. The important thing is to keep a relatively level head, not to get really angry at your editor, and just be thoughtful and smart about it. All right, so my 12th author confession. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a little juicy and a little bit hard to explain, but I have at least talked to other authors who have reported similar things and that helped me feel a little less gaslit because you're always going to second guess yourself. And this confession is, so my debut was published by what is called a major publisher, but not a big five. And this is gonna sound crazy when you're on the outside, but it is legitimately true. I have felt the difference being published by a major publisher rather than a big five. It's this phenomenon where you're in a conversation, it can be with another author, it can be with just an industry professional, even sometimes with a reader, they're usually your publisher is not going to come up with a reader, where like you tell them your book and you tell them your publisher and it's like the light dies in their eyes a little and you can tell that they're just a little less interested in speaking to you anymore. It's happened to me a few times. It's disheartening every time. It's happened to other people, like I said, I, I thought maybe it's just me. It'll also sometimes happen, and I think this can happen to people with the big five, by the way, where it's like, oh, you're an author, and you tell them who you are and what your book is, but if they've never heard of it, they become less interested. There's also a buzz factor to this, but definitely it's kind of like, you're gonna be treated differently if you're able to say you're with Harper Teen versus HMH. It's not nice, it's not fair, it's not cool, but it's definitely something that I have encountered. But ultimately you kind of have to not let it really get to you, but I will not lie, I have already noticed a difference with my third book, which is being published by the Big Five, and some of the reactions and treatment I've gotten, and I'm quite keen to see what happens when my cover drops. It is superb, guys. I'm so excited because I, I, I think that when you're with certain publishers and they give certain push to your book, you're just treated differently and it's just kind of a reality of the industry. So my 13th author confession, I almost made a whole video about this and decided in light of the global situation, it would be too depressing, but I'm gonna slip it in here. And that's just my author confession that honestly, I was really kind of depressed slash apathetic about my second book coming out. I was dreading the release date. I wasn't looking forward to it. I didn't want to celebrate it in any way. You might have noticed I did not do a launch event. I didn't do anything really on this channel either. And I'll just be honest with you. Sometimes with the greatest joys of your life can come some of the strangest lows. I'll never know how much of this is because of my personal situation. And I did cover this in my writing and grief video. My mom died last year. She never got to read this book. And it was also just ugh, my first 
book release without my mom. And I think that was a huge part of it, don't get me wrong, but second book depression syndrome, which is what I call it, is not that uncommon because another thing with second books that happens very, very often for writers, you're shiny when you have your debut come out and you're way less shiny <laughs> when your second book comes out. In a lot of cases, people simply don't care that an author has a second book coming out. There's less coverage, press, usually your publisher is going to do far less as well and I had all of that going on as well. And it kind of creates this weird feedback cycle where you just kind of you don't want to care too much because it hurts. Does that make sense? So honestly my author confession is for a variety of reasons I was kind of like bummed and let down by my own second book release. And it's frustrating because I actually really love my second book and I'm super proud of it but I'm just giving you this confession to let you know that there are very complex emotions that go into writing and publishing. I mean another really common thing is post debut depression syndrome. This is the few weeks after your debut comes out where you just get really really sad. I went through that as well. It's super common. So yeah, roller coaster of emotions when it comes to publishing. And that is the last author confession I have on my list, which is such a depressing place to end and I already kind of said something about it, but I'm going to give you a bonus confession, which is that I have seen my cover for the Ivies. It is really sexy and I think it's going to rock some socks, blow some people away. I cannot wait to reveal it. And yeah, that's like my, my mini confession. I hope you enjoyed all of these secret author confessions, little glimpses into some of the, you know, truths, unspoken truths of some author stuff, or at least my personal author stuff. It's just how I feel about certain things, but I hope this offered some insight, some reassurance, fascination, or whatever you take away from it. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. You know I'll make more videos with transparency about publishing in the industry and if you're not already subscribed to the channel go ahead and do that and please turn on the notification bell so you know when I post a new video which is two to three times a week. As always guys thank you so much for watching and as always happy writing.